Happy, happy Wednesday. So last week we talked about a really important phrase. If you did not watch last week's video, I highly recommend you take the time to do that. This is the second piece of last week's video and I feel like it's such an important thing to understand. The words that we choose to speak, our bodies are always listening to us and I know I could probably spend weeks sharing with you how this works and I might in some time not too far down the road. But right now, I want to work on a really important word that a lot of us get stuck with. So we get stuck with saying things like, I am not able to do this, or I'm not good at that, or I don't know how to do this. So what happens is every time we're speaking like that, we're focusing in on our past. Last week, you learned about a very important phrase to start implementing to make changes and dynamics in your energy. What that means is that what we speak connects to something, right? The first thing it connects to is ourselves because our bodies are always listening. We have billions of cells and our body is always listening to what it is that we're actually focused on thinking about, but also our environment and what we're actually choosing to think and say. So as we start choosing our words more carefully, and we start remembering that our words are orders, if you will, that our body believes. So if we say, I am positive, the body goes, oh. If we say, I am depressed, the body goes, oh. If we say, I'm not a good money manager, the body goes, yeah. The thing is, is that we'll keep making choices that make us bad money managers, right? So last week's phrase is really, really important. Understanding how affirmations work are also really, really important. And um, if you go through my, my channel, you're going to see a couple of videos that talk about how affirmations work. And I will always consistently talk about them because I think we're not informed enough. I think we get little pieces of information about how the healing process works. And then we try something and then it doesn't work. And we say, yeah, this is bull crap. Or, hey, you know, it doesn't work for me. It would work for you if you ask a lot of questions and understand the process. It's also important to trust the process, but we don't blindly trust in the healing process. We honor our intelligence and we ask questions and then we give things a shot because they start to vibrate or resonate in a way that feels right to us. Not everything has to be understood, but things do need to vibrate and resonate at a really cool place. So one of my very favorite words to work with that's a single word is the word yet. I don't know how to do this yet. I haven't learned how to manage money yet. I haven't found my life partner yet. I haven't found my dream home yet. Why would that be such an important phrase to the point that I want to spend a whole video talking to you about it? When we remind ourselves that we're not stuck in this moment, and that every moment gives us an opportunity to shift and change should we want to and, and are able to. When we use the word yet compared to this is just how it is. And then you work with a structured phrase like we were talking about last time, last week. If you commit to something of I'm never going to find my life partner. And you pay attention to how that makes you actually feel you're gonna notice how that makes you feel. Now you might have some other thing that's really important to you. I'm just using this as an example. As you give yourself space to see how that feels in your body, you're gonna notice you physically feel something. That's energy that's in the body that's reacting to what it is that you're thinking or what it is you're saying. All kinds of studies have been done on this where we can amp ourselves up out of fear. It affects our adrenaline. It affects our, our spending process. It affects our, our mental process. It affects our chemistry, it affects everything, right? So if we don't learn to really pay attention to the words that we choose to speak, our healing is gonna be stagnant or it's gonna take a long time because our words are how we anchor in and pay attention to what it is we're wanting to express and communicate and connect with. It's our way of also showing up in the moment, right? So when I choose to use the words, this is how I am, like I'm never going to find this, what happens is that's based on the experience that I've gone through in my life already, right? It Maybe through my breakups, maybe through poor choices I've made. I'm never gonna be a good money manager. I'm never gonna do this. I'm never gonna do that, right? 
as I do that, what that does is it not only looks, it's subconscious, but it's a belief that's happened from past things. Sometimes it's beliefs even that people have thrown on us, like parents or maybe society on some level. I'm never going to do this, right? So what that does is it puts our energy kind of backwards. So imagine that to heal, we have to be lined up. We have to be in body, mind, spirit in this present moment. We have to be in alignment in the present moment. So when we're looking at never, and that connects to poor choices we feel like we've made, ways we're judging ourselves, things of that nature, what happens is we're putting our energy here, and now we're distracting ourselves, and it takes energy and momentum to get back to the present moment. So if our brains are saying, I'm never, and you notice it's about ready to happen, <gasps> that breath in through the nose, out through the mouth, I'm a huge fan of acknowledging gratitude for the moment that we're even aware of what's going on in front of us, because most of us don't even have that consciousness. Conscious mind is grace, that we're even able to notice anything that's just grace in the moment, and that's a beautiful part of us living our lives in this moment, that we have the opportunity to change in any given moment. So if all of a sudden you're saying, I'm never going to do this, look at all these things that have happened to me, and you're spending time validating 10 or 15 reasons why it's never going to work for you and it's not okay for you, how do you think that's going to line up with what it is you're genuinely saying you want for yourself? Some of us have even gotten to a point where we don't even want anymore because what's the point? Because we just feel like it's all going to go bad. We all do this to a certain degree. Some do it much more actively and unconsciously than others. Once it starts to wake up in the consciousness, that's where stuff really does start to change. And that's where we're all at right now, or you wouldn't be watching this video. So when you notice these things happening, I, I'm not good at this yet. I haven't found my partner yet. And what that does is instead of putting the energy there, it pulls us here, and again, it creates a hope and an excitement of what wonderful thing might happen today. What wonderful experience might happen today? What good thing might happen today? It's a very powerful thing to think about, and it could be that you don't realize how powerful you really are. A lot of us, because we are so powerful, have been diminished over time or we've been shamed over time because we've had the courage to go into a new relationship. We've had the courage to try a new job. We've had the courage to be able to open up with a new work idea. And maybe it's failed. At least we had the courage to try. But what happens then is a lot of society around us, they can say, oh yeah, well relationships suck and marriage sucks and this and that. And maybe that's their truth, but the question is, is it your truth that you choose to hold on to? So I'm gonna say that again. Is it your truth that you choose to hold on to? Because that is the most important thing here. Your truth can be anything that you want it to be, and your truth can change in two seconds. When I was when I was younger, one of my one of my personal beliefs were that men um, they just they, you could kind of do it by yourself right? That was a belief that I had. So I would create relationships in my life where I was maybe a sole provider, or maybe I was the one that needed to pretend that I could do X, Y, and Z instead of just reaching out for help. And I didn't realize until, until I started doing work with this, that if I wanted to have a healthy, loving relationship, I needed to do work on breaking apart the beliefs that I was holding on to, to make sure they actually integrated with me. So I'm not good at this yet. I don't have my life partner yet. I don't have my dream home yet. I don't have a job that I love yet. But if I believe that it was coming, would I feel more hopeful? If I believe that it was coming, would I wanna do work to see if I'm in alignment with what it is that I'm trying to create for myself? I can't tell you how many times people call me up as a medical intuitive and say, can you help me with creating a healthy relationship. And I'm like, yeah, of course, let's get on the phone. Let's see if we're compatible. So we get on the phone, we start talking like, yeah, you know, this happened to me. And you know, you know, my husband's just stupid and he's this and he's that. And I'm like, wait, weren't you asking for help to create a healthy, loving relationship in your life and you're married? So why are we talking this way about this? If we're wanting to create a healthy, loving relationship? Well, because you know, X, Y, and Z. So up until now, maybe this is what's been happening. And maybe you haven't experienced that yet, but how can we change your beliefs? How can we change your habits? How can we change your words to be able to create the experience that you want right now? So a lot of people get stuck on relationships and they want healthy relationships. 
want a healthy relationship. They want a partnership. And I'll ask them, how are you doing and in integrating presently in your day-to-day life? And they're like, what do you mean? And they're like, oh, you don't know what I've gone through. I'm like, oh, I can kind of tell by the way you're talking. And then there's like this quiet thing. People pay attention. And not only does people pay attention, the energy around us pays attention. And if you're trying to heal your body, your, your body's listening to every single thing that you're saying. Make sure you're in integrity with what it is that you're saying. So if you want more finances and maybe you haven't been good at investing in the past, or maybe you haven't been good with something else in the past, you can use the phrase we talked about last week. And you can also say, oh, I, I'm not good at that yet, but I'm going to learn how to do it differently. From there, it opens up a different conversation of what do you really believe? Do you really believe that you're capable? And if you say no, then you break that down and you start working with it. This is the thing. You are capable of anything that you want if you're willing to align yourself. If you're willing to move through whatever trauma you're holding on to and the beliefs that that trauma is held on to for you. It's very traumatic when things don't go the way we want. As long as we don't concrete ourselves into that and say this is how it's always going to be we can really make dynamic shifts and changes then we get to have the awesome stories of success of love and money and everything else peace internal peace that you could possibly want it's right here for you it's just learning how to create that for yourself it really is and then it's learning how to pay attention to yourself and pay attention to how you're speaking how does it affect you inside Are you speaking in a way that creates what you want for yourself? Or are you speaking in a way that kind of sabotages what you want for yourself? You wouldn't think it could, but I think if you pay attention, you'll be pleasantly surprised to see that you have some good work to do on yourself. You just might not know how to do it. Be kind to yourself. Maybe you haven't figured it out yet. That doesn't mean you're not going to figure it out. You are brilliant and you are a thousand percent capable. Explore. Don't stop. The biggest thing I see that makes my heart so sad is that people forget we are given these beautiful lives to explore. We're exploring relationships and careers and places to live and all kinds of amazing things. But one of the biggest things for me that it will bring tears to my eyes is that we get to we get to explore ourselves. We get to explore how life affected us and we get to coach ourselves and love ourselves through the trauma and the beliefs that were created, and we can walk through them courageously. We never forget, but we can hold on to things that help support and inspire what we want more of in our lives and let go of the energy and the beliefs and the the dynamics that are there that get in the way of what we wanna actually create in our lives. Never give up focusing on what you wanna create. That's where depression kicks in. That's where anxiety kicks in. Never tell yourself you're not capable. Maybe you haven't figured it out yet. Hasn't happened yet. It's a powerful statement to remember. You are worthy. You are capable. It's not just for the person next door. It's not just for me. It's not just for my my family. It's for you. It's for you. This is your life. These are your moments. Choose these moments well. Let go of anything that's not in this moment that no longer serves and supports you, whether it's a belief, whether it's whatever it is. Honor it. Move through it. Create alignment with this moment and admit to yourself what it is you genuinely want for yourself. And know this is a phenomenal time to be alive. Energetics. I've never seen energetics like this. They help catapult healing in such a profound way. You are worthy of change. You are worthy of more. And you are worthy of being happy and peaceful in your heart. Let yourself heal. So what? You haven't figured it out yet. Do the work. It's time. And it will work. It will work if you do the work. 